Ahoy there! Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you everything you need to know about the various different gameplay and system mechanics in EVE Echoes. In today's lesson, we're going to be covering everything you need to know about drones, from what they do, how to use them, where to find them, what skills affect them, what ships can equip them, everything that you need to know regarding this very powerful weapon system. Very powerful weapon system in so much as I rated it number one of all the different weapon systems currently available in EVE Echoes, partially due to its versatility. Now, there is going to be a lot of ground to cover in this episode, so I have put a load of timestamps in the description below if there's a particular section you want to jump ahead to, so please be aware of that. If you enjoy a video like this, please be aware these take a long time to put together and script out, etc. So if you do want to help support this channel, you can do so by heading over to our Patreon page or indeed checking out our Redbubble merchandise store. Every dollar helps keep this all going. That all said and done then, let's jump right in to talking about everything you need to know about drones. Drones are an exceptionally varied and versatile weapon system in EVE Echoes. Whereas most weapon systems have a small, medium and large size to them, and then have a long range and a short range variant, all of those weapons then tend to be linked to a particular type of damage. So for example, whether you're looking at small lasers, medium lasers, large lasers, pulse lasers or beam lasers, as the long range and the short range versions, you're looking at electromagnetic and thermal damage. Then if you want to compare that to something like railguns, again you get small, medium and large, you then get snub-nosed railguns for the short range variant, and rifle railguns for the long range variant, providing kinetic and thermal damage. Once we look at drones, there are still the small, medium and large sizes, but we don't get any variants in the ranges, instead what we get are variants in damage types. So there are drones that deal electromagnetic damage, drones that deal thermal damage, drones that deal kinetic damage, and drones that deal explosive damage. And for the most part, it's one type of drone for each uh, damage type across each size. So there is one small electromagnetic drone, one small explosive drone, so on and so forth. This doesn't apply at large size where we do also get sentry drones but we will talk about that more later on. Now what makes drones so unique is that they're not just a weapon that you fire at your opponent and that's it. The statistics that you need to take into consideration here are absolutely completely off the wall different to what we saw before. Now I am basing this on the understanding that you've watched my video on how turrets work because that is going to be a vital aspect of this along with things like how your ship's propulsion works because drones are essentially small ships that attack the enemy. Now to exemplify this, let's actually have a look at some of their stats, and we'll start off here with the Minmatar Warrior Drone. Now when you look at a drone, you'll see that depending on its mark, so here we've got a Mark 3, then there's Marks 5, Mark 7, Mark 9, etc. You'll notice that the damage type obviously remains the same amongst these. All Warriors deal explosive damage, 33.24 damage here for the Mark 3 Warrior at 8.31 DPS. Beyond this, however, the rest of the stats and the actual number of damage will increase, obviously, as you go from Mark 3 to Mark 5 to Mark 7 to Mark 9 and beyond. If we look at a drone's stats, though, you'll see this looks very vaguely familiar to when we look at a ship's stats. You can see we've got an overall defense, which is essentially the HP of the drone. Deal 389 damage to this warrior, and that's it. It's going to go pop and bye-bye. We then have a tech level and meta level, obviously related to the type of drone, in this case a Mark III, and a power grid requirement, which is what it require, what is required to actually fit this, in inverted commas, into your ship. And we'll talk about that more later on, because even how you fit drones is a little bit different. They then have an activation time. Activation time is just like with turrets and missiles, it's how frequently they loose a shot at the enemy, whether it's, you know, the electromagnetic explosive or whatever type it is. In this case, the warrior will fire at its target once every four seconds, and it will do so whether or not it's actually in range. That's something worth bearing in mind, because we then actually get the weapon system beneath it. Here we have the Mark III Warrior's optimal range of 2.1 kilometers and an accuracy falloff of 2 kilometers, which means the drone will start firing at no matter what range it's in, 
but it will only start actually applying damage once within about the 6 kilometer margin because we've got that optimal range of 2.1 which then again has the accuracy fall off of 2 kilometers so it's 50% effectiveness at 4.1 kilometers and it's at 0% effectiveness give or take at about 6.1 kilometers. We then have a tracking speed. This is, again, very similar to how you would know tracking speed on turrets. The higher this number, the easier it is to hit smaller, faster moving targets. I'm not going to go into how tracking speed, optimal range and accuracy fall off work in this video. If you're confused by those, do check out the video on how turrets work. I'll put a link in the description for that one. Unusually here, you'll see that we then have a flight velocity and an orbital speed here on the Warriors. This is something you may not have noticed, you know, it doesn't exist on other ships. The flight velocity does, that's the speed at which the drone will move from A to B. If the drone has been launched from your ship and it's flying at a target in the distance, it will approach it at a speed of 5,040 meters per second. So you can see these are very fast little ships, and there are a lot of bonuses that will make that work faster. If things like like skills um, and hull bonuses. The orbital speed, however, is essentially how fast a drone will actually move at once it has engaged the target and starts to orbit, because a drone will fly to a target, then proceed to activate an orbit around it and start shooting, and you'll see that it does drop dramatically there. It goes from that 5,040 meters per second all the way down to 900 meters per second. Now drones are still very small and that's still quite a fast flight velocity which makes them fairly difficult to hit if you don't have something like a stasis web fire in order to just to slow it down that little bit. This means that drones can be a bit of a thorn in the side um, when it comes to some of those larger weapon systems because they can get in under the guns and orbit away at that. Basically, you need to also think of the different sizes that we have here. We'll talk about this more later, but of course the Warrior is a small drone. It's designed for use on frigates and destroyers. Then there are medium drones designed for use on uh, cruisers and battle cruisers. And then there are large drones designed for use on battleships. Ultimately, as we go up the sizes, you'll see that they slow down further and further, plus they're bigger drones, to the point that a battleship drone, a large drone, is actually not far off the size of a frigate. Um, but essentially, they're still fairly difficult to hit, and obviously the smaller one, the smaller the drone is, the better it applies against smaller, faster moving targets, but the less damage it does in retrospect. So when we look at the Minmatar drones here, in the case here of the Warrior, you'll see that these are very fast, they deal explosive damage, and they've got a fairly comfortable optimal range and accuracy fall off. Let's have a look at some of the others. Now the Hobgoblin is the Galente Navy version, so the Galente Federation drone. Um, these deal, uh, instead of explosive, they're dealing uh, thermal damage there, you can see the red 33.24 at the top, thermal damage being dealt by Galente drones, no matter what size they are, they're all dealing thermal damage. We've got a bit higher defense here, 413, and the activation time, power grid requirements are all the same. Optimal range and accuracy fall off is the same. Slightly lower tracking speed, considerably slower flight velocity and orbital speed. Now, you may be wondering, like, you know, okay, so surely I would just use the, uh, the Mimitar drones. Well, not necessarily. This is ultimately going to depend entirely on what you want your drone to do. Something with thermal damage is going to be better against shields, for example, whereas the explosive damage of the Mimitar drone is going to be better against things like armor. Then we have the Kaldari variant, the Hornet. You can see here, 33.24 damage, this time being done in Kinetic. Kinetic is pretty good against armor, but it's not terrible against shield either, so it does give a nice little balance here. You see it's got more defense again, 482, um, slightly longer optimal range at 2.4 kilometers, low tracking speed, well, lower tracking speed at 2.45, and a fairly slow flight velocity at 3.780, with an orbital speed of 8.94. Curiously though, you'll see there, if we compare the Kaldari Hornet at 3.780 and 8.94 to the Hobgoblin, unusually, it's actually normally the Kaldari ships that are the slowest. Kaldari drones are actually fairly nippy. They're not as fast as Mimitar drones, of course, but they are not as slow as Galente drones. Finally, then, that brings us to the Acolyte, which is the Amar Navy drone. This is the one that deals electromagnetic damage, so it will cut through shields like a knife through hot butter. Then we have an overall defense, 529, the highest of those, good optimal range, good accuracy fall off, fairly good tracking speed, and it's a lot faster than the others as well. That flight velocity of 4620 and orbital speed of 996 is second only to the Minmatar drone. 
Essentially what you have there is the second fastest drone, the second tankiest drone, but it's entirely based on electromagnetic damage, so excellent if you're going against shields, but as soon as she starts shooting on armor, it's not really going to do all that much. Now you'll notice that there is one statistic at the bottom here that I've not talked about, and this is the same across all of the drones, and actually it does vary more based on you and your skills, as we'll talk about in just a moment. This is drone command range. Essentially, the target that you are attacking must be within drone command range in order for your drones to actually fly off and start attacking them. In this case, you can see I've got a drone command range of 30 kilometers. That means if my opponent is within 30 kilometers or at 30 kilometers and I choose to attack, the drone will shoot off toward the target, start orbiting it, and start shooting it. If that target is at 33 kilometers or you know anything higher than 30 kilometers, basically, this drone will tell you, I'm not able to reach this, I cannot attack it, and you will get a little error pop up when you try to do so. Just like if you try to activate a stasis web of fire um, or a warp disruptor or something that is outside its optimal range there, you will get a notice saying, target is outside drone control range, cannot send the drone in, or however it's worded. Um, so that's something to bear in mind as we go forward later on and start looking at skills. But those are just the small drones. I've mentioned, of course, drones come in all three different sizes, and there's a couple of different varieties once we hit large. So let's jump into the market and have a look at those next. You can find drones on the market by heading down to mid slots and then into drones from there, and you'll come up with this little screen here that you're seeing. And you can see these are now then subdivided further into their different size categories, starting off with the small drones that we've already had a look at. So we've got like the Acolytes, the Hornets, the Hobgoblins, and the Warriors. If we minimize this little category and have a look at the medium drones. Medium drones start at tech level 5. These are designed for use on ships that are medium or larger, so cruisers, battle cruisers, and battleships. And again, you'll see these follow very similar sort of blueprints to the, uh, to the small versions. For the Amar Empire, we have the Infiltrator, which does electromagnetic damage. You can see being a medium-sized drone, it has more HP, it has a better optimal range and a better accuracy falloff, it has slower tracking speed, slower flight velocity, and slower orbital speed than its smaller brethren. The idea here, the concept, is that medium drones do higher damage and are more survivable, but they do struggle a bit more to hit smaller, faster moving targets, or at least that's the theory. I would argue that medium drones actually apply their damage pretty well to some of the smaller faster moving targets. But the Infiltrator then is the Amar Empire variant, you can see here 70.5 in Electromagnetic, the Vespa is the Kaldari Navy one that, deal, that deals kinetic damage, again decent enough defense overall, a little bit better range there than we saw before, very slow flight velocity and slower orbital speed. We then come up to the Hammerhead, which is the Galente Federation's thermal drone, and the Valkyrie, which is the Minmatar Republic's explosive drone. As you'd imagine, this is the fastest of the four. Good optimal range, great accuracy fall off, very fast flight velocity, good orbital speed, um, and it's, it's what you'd expect from a Minmatar drone. Once we hit large drones, we then have the Praetor for the Amar Empire. This deals electromagnetic damage, and you'll see these start at Mark 7. These are designed for use on battleships. We then have the Kaldari Wasp, which is our kinetic damage followed by the Ogre for the Galente Federation, which deals thermal damage, and below that we have the Berserker, which is of course our Minmatar drone with explosive damage. And if we look at the stats here, you'll see these have a lot more HP. Actually, they've got about as much HP as some frigates do. Good optimal range, very nice accuracy fall off there of five kilometers. Flight velocity is a lot slower, 1800 meters per second with an orbital speed of 420. These, again, are basically like small frigates that are going to orbit your opponent, shoot them and do what they can there. But below these, we then have some rather unusual looking drones, the Curator, the Warden, the Guard and the Bouncer. These are what are called Sentry Drones, we'll talk more about these later on, but just have a brief look at these and what they are. The Curator here is the Amar Empire version, electromagnetic damage. You'll notice that as we come down these, they have massive optimal range and accuracy fall off compared to other drones, but they have incredibly low tracking, 0.02 here on the Curator Mark 7. 
no flight velocity, and no orbital speed. Essentially what a sentry drone does is you drop it out of the dock next to you and it sits there almost like as a sentry gun, hence the name, firing at targets in the distance. It's kind of the sniper equivalent of drones perhaps. Um, so the curator is the Amar Empire one, of course we have the Kaldari Warden which deals kinetic damage, um, again 60 km optimal range with an accuracy fall off of 42 km, very long range on these things, you can theoretically get a range there of about 140 km. It is worth noting however that you can only shoot at something that is within your drone command range, so down here you see drone command range is still 30 km as basic. So what's the point in that additional optimal range and accuracy fall off? Well, you'll see that later on when we start looking at some of the drone hulls. Let's continue onwards. The Guard is then the Galente Federation Thermal variant. This, you can see, has a lot shorter optimal range and accuracy fall off. Does do a bit more sort of a punch there with it, though. Um, the idea of that is that it's kind of like the equivalent of a snub-nosed railgun. And then the Minmatar Bouncer. 36 km optimal range, accuracy fall off of 54 km, and a very nice explosive damage there as well. Well, so sentry drones are the ones that you just kind of drop out of the drone bay to the side of your ship and they will fire at your opponent, whereas all other drones kind of just fly off from your ship to blow up your target. Now, there I've talked about drone bays, so I think that's a nice little segue into talking about what ships can actually use drones. How can you tell if your ship can use drones and what type of drones can your ship use? For this section, we're going to be in the Galente Federation ship tree. It's not the only ship tree out there that has drones in it, as we'll see later on, but the Galente Federation are kind of renowned for their drones. It even says at the bottom here, relies on railguns backed up by drones. They balance armor with speed. Now, if we head right the way down on the frigate branch to tech level 3, the first drone ship you may encounter is the tech level 3 Tristan. This is actually one of my favorite frigates in the game. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it here. I have done numerous different videos about this one. If you're interested, so just type in Captain Benzie Tristan and it'll take you through to that. Um, but it's one of the first drone ships that you may encounter. And if we head through to its attributes and fittings and look at its fitting profile here in the top right of the screen, that's underneath where it says Tristan and Power Grid output, all those weird icons. Now you should recognize the two high slots, the one mid slot and the two low slots, the th rightmost three low uh, icons there. But the one on the left that looks kind of like a triple fingered claw um, with a two next to it, that is what is referred to as a drone tube. This is how many drone tubes this ship has and thus how many uh, drones it can launch into combat. Now, annoyingly, there is nowhere here that actually tells you whether these are small, medium, or large drone tubes. So it's kind of one of those things you either just have to learn about it or make an educated guess. The basic way of considering this is that if your ship is a frigate or a destroyer, those are going to be small drone tubes. If it is a cruiser or battle cruiser, they're going to be medium drone tubes. And if it's a battleship, they will be large drone tubes. Now if I come out of this and actually jump into the fitting screen here, you'll be able to see these on the right hand side of the screen once this all loads, which takes a while because yay our internet. Now on the right hand side of the screen here, you'll see that we have our typical mid slot here, which I've put an interruptive warp disruptor into, and then below it I've got two drones launched in. I'm actually just going to move these um, out of the way for the time being to showcase what this would look like on a new ship. You can see there that the mid slot is denoted by those two vertical lines, whereas then we have that sort of three claw um, there for the drone tube. So let's pop the interruptive warp disruptor back in there. Now there are two ways that you can load a drone tube. If you tap on it, obviously it will give you the drone interface here. Now the first bit to notice about this is that it says launch tube here on the left hand side and then it's got an S. That S means small drones, in case you hadn't already guessed. If it's, a, if it's capable of taking medium drones, that will be an M, and if it's capable of taking large drones, it will take an L. And all you have to do is you tap the drone that's in your station, and you add it to that drone tube. And you can al always add new drones into the drone bay at the bottom here as well. You can see that I've got some Mark 9 Hobgoblins, Hornets, uh, Warriors, and Acolytes already in the drone bay. This, these are essentially drones that you can swap to later on, because yes, you can hot swap drones when you're in combat, which is a pretty awesome ability for drones. If I go out, if I undock with lasers fitted to my high slots, they can only do electromagnetic and thermal damage against the target, and whether they're small, medium, or large lasers, they're locked to that particular range and tracking. 
With drones, however, whilst you're out in space, you can actually recall your drones back and you can swap to a different type. So you could be using, for example, the Acolytes to cut through your target's shields. And then once you're down to dealing with their armor, bring those drones back and send out some warriors that deal explosive damage. You could be sitting there in a battleship using large sentry drones to shoot at targets a long way away when some un like some pirate jumps into your anomaly, you then bring those sentry drones back and you swap to small or medium drones that have the application to fit the frigate that's just jumped you of the particular type of damage that you want to be dealing to that target. That is why drones are so dangerously versatile. Now, the Tristan may be the first drone ship that you'll encounter um, if you're starting off and looking through the market, but if you are either doing the return to the game where you get access to destroyers, or indeed part of your first month of Omega where you get a crate that allows you to choose a destroyer of your choice, you may have encountered either the Algos Trainer or the Dragoon Trainer. And these you'll see are here at tech level 4 find the right one we have the algos trainer here and if we're looking at his stats again on the fitting profile going from right to left you can see it's got two engineering rigs two combat rigs three low slots one mid slot two high slots and then at the far left side three drone tubes now if that wasn't already clue enough then you can see as we scroll down and um, the algos trainer gets a bonus to drone velocity how fast those drones actually shoot off against the opponent um, plus small drone operation will give you a bonus to drone DPS. Um, there's definitely um, some, some advantages here um, to drones, which kind of suggest that this is a drone ship. And this then continues, obviously all of the Algos line, as you find them in the Galente Federation, are indeed drone ships. Once we start heading up though, things become a little foggier. Yes, okay, we have cruisers like the Vexer, and the Vexer is of course a medium-sized ship, and that therefore the five drones that it can launch, it can launch medium-sized drones. It can actually also launch small drones, but it's worth noting that you can only launch drones if they are equal to or smaller than the type of drone tube on the ship. So the Vexer has five medium drone tubes, so it can launch five drones of either medium or small size, and it is one of each. That is not five mediums and then some multi application out of the smalls. If you wanted to be launching small drones out of a Vexa, it can still only launch five of them. And again, you can tell if the drone tubes weren't already a dead giveaway with the amount of them. It gets bonuses here to drone DPS, drone effective hit points, and drone command range. This is where, as we were talking about earlier, the fact that you have a 30 kilometer limit, but then some of your drones might have longer ranges than that. This is where that can come in handy because here on the Vexa, you'll see we're getting medium drone operation gives us an additional two kilometers. So at full medium drone operation um, five, that's an additional uh, 10 kilometers there added on. So you can now shoot, uh, launch your drones at targets that are 40 kilometers away. And there are other ways you can massively increase that later on, as we'll see. Again, this goes up with things like the Myrmidon. The Myrmidon is a battle cruiser designed to use drones, five drone tubes, drone bonuses across the hull. And of course, once we hit battleship size, we get the Dominix. Everyone's heard of the Dominix. This is the big, bad drone battleship that can launch small, medium, or large drones, get some absolutely insane stats to the five drones that it has, 40% drone DPS per level, 5% um, additional drone optimal range per level, 5% drone tracking speed per level, but most annoyingly here, most impressively perhaps, Battleship Command. This gives you an additional 10 kilometers to your drone command range, so that's an additional 50 kilometers. That's going to take you up to 80 kilometers with very little, way in, uh, very little in the way of training and no rigs. But again, we'll talk about that more later on when we get to the sections regarding skills and rigs, as there are ways to increase your drone command range even further. But that's not the full length of the story. If you enjoy drones and you want to have more ships that use them, it's worth also paying attention to the Amar Empire ship tree and the Dragoon line of destroyers. These, again, are drone destroyers that you, uh, get bonuses to drones and have three drone tubes. Once you start hitting the uh, cruiser size for the Amar Empire, we have the Arbitrator line, which are drone cruisers. And then up at uh, Battle Cruiser, the ever uh, ever popular Prophecy. Again, very popular Battle Cruiser here, entirely based around drones. And at Battleship level, we then have the Armageddon, which is a drone ship. It's only got four drones compared to the Dominix's five, but it does get some very scary bonuses to other weapon systems and that as well. But it's not just the Amar Empire and the uh, Galente Federation that have dedicated drone ships. It's worth also having a brief look at the Guristus Pirates. Um, the Worm is one of only two drone frigates currently in the game, the Tristan at tech level three and the Worm. 
this gets some absolutely terrifying bonuses to drone tubes um, and it gets a massive there 200% increase to small drone damage plus additional for the skills. Basically the worm counts its two drones as if they were multiples much much higher. We then have the healer which is the uh, Gurustus Pirates fa Pirate Faction Cruiser again two drone tubes launching medium drones this time um, with massive bonuses to them and then finally at battleship level we have the rattlesnake which can be using large um, large and sentry drones out of those drone tubes as well and again all of those ships have been covered in videos elsewhere on this channel the final faction to notice here are the servant sisters of eve these aren't quite as combat heavy as the guristus pirates but they are drone capable ships here you can see the astero has three drone tubes compared to the worms too but it has less in the way of bonuses to the actual damage applied by those drones the sisters of eve ships here whilst they are technically drone ships they're more in the way of exploratory vessels rather than direct combat but they're just worth bearing in mind there for the fact that they do get uh, a lot of drone tubes and they do get bonuses to those weapon systems now, as a complete curveball here, let's jump into the Mimitar Republic, because drones aren't just available on very specific ships. It's not just drone destroyers, drone frigates, drone cruisers, drone battle cruisers, drone battleships. Once you start hitting cruiser size, you'll see that most ships actually have a drone tube. Here, if we look at the basic stabber, you'll see that in addition to its four high slots, two mid slots, four lows, and two of each of the rig types, it has a drone tube. Now, if we look at its stats, there are no bonuses to drones here, so what really is the point in that? Well, drones basically become a supplemental damage system to cruisers and above. You can launch a drone, which is usually of the same size, so again, in the case of the Stabber here, that is a medium drone tube, you can launch medium or small drones. They're not the main so uh, source of your damage, and thus, if you're focused on a ship like the Stabber, don't think you need to start training drones just because it's got a drone tube. The majority of your damage here is still coming from your medium cannons, um, but you do have that drone to assist you against smaller, faster targets that your cannons might be otherwise struggling against. And this does go all the way up to things like, for example, the Tempest Striker. This is a battleship that has two drone tubes. There are no bonuses to drones anywhere on this hull. Those are purely there as supplemental damage. And that's just worth bearing in mind. That's not just the Mimitar Republic. That's the Kaldari. It's the Amar Empire. It's all of these different things. In fact, you can pick any ship pretty much from cruiser or above. And you see even here, the Naga 2, which I've just kind of tapped randomly, has got a drone tube. If we go down to the Osprey, which is a logistics vessel, it's a healing vessel. It's got a drone tube. It's just something you start to see at cruiser sizes. So for the most part, if you're interested in drones, definitely pay attention to the Galente Federation and the Amar Empire, along with the Guristus Pirates and the Servant Sisters of Eve. Those are the ship trees you're going to be looking at mostly if drones are what you're interested in. So if you now know what ships you want to be flying, what kind of skills should you be training? As you may expect, what with them being a weapon system or all, the skills related to drones are found on the ship side of the skill tree. And if you're looking at a skill tree like this, I do strongly recommend that you tap at the top where it says switch. This particular page is nice in that it gives you some good suggested skills of where you might want to go. Very nice early on if you're not sure what you should be training. But once you've got your foot properly on the ground, you've got your sea legs, so to speak, I do strongly recommend uh, swapping across here to the full skill tree because this gives you complete unfettered access to all of the different skills and you can navigate through and have a look at all of them. So let's go to weapon technology. Now yes drone is there at the bottom but we're actually going to stop and talk about cannons briefly and there is a reason for this, don't worry. Now if you're a small cannon pilot, you've looked at the Rifter and the Slasher, the Thrasher and the Drumiel and thought to yourself, I quite fancy flying those. You're going to look at small cannon operation and small cannon upgrade and go, cool, those benefit the ship that I fly. You're going to train those and then like me, once you've hit sort of the end of those, you come down a bit further and you see, oh, there's medium cannon operation, medium cannon upgrade. But medium cannons don't affect me anymore. That's for people who are flying things like hurricanes and stabbers. And you'd be right. So there you would stop training. And you could do the same with drone. You could look at, say, I want to be a Tristan pilot, or I want to fly the Worm, or the Dragoon, or the Algos hulls. I've got small drone operation. I've got small drone upgrade. The next skill is medium drone operation. That doesn't help me, so I'm done training you'd have missed one of the most important skills as a drone pilot. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list here, there is a skill called simply 
drone. And this is vital if you want to be flying any kind of drones out there. Most importantly, you'll notice that if we go into drone, one of the first abilities that this has is drone control number. When you start the game, you have the capability of launching two drones. Without any form of skill, you can launch two drones from drone tubes and command them off into combat. They'll have no bonuses, but if you're flying, say, a stabber or something like, you know, any other cruiser or battle cruiser or battleship that only has one or two drone tubes, is not a dedicated drone ship, then that's going to be enough. But then what if you go to an Algos, for example, that has three drone tubes? Suddenly the game's going to say, well, actually, you can only launch two of them. That's where this skill comes in. By training drone to basic five, you're going to have an additional plus three drone control number, which gives you the maximum capable amount of drones in the game of five. That is absolutely a vital skill right off the bat. There are drone ships later on that uh, at small size will launch anywhere up to four drones. Once you start hitting some of the cruisers and battle cruisers and battleships, as we saw with things like the Vexa, the Dominix and the Myrmidon, these then have five drone tubes and you will need to have drone at maximum basic in order to launch all five of them. Otherwise you're losing a massive chunk of DPS because you just cannot launch all the drones you want. We then have an increase to drone command range. Five kilometer increase for having basic trained up to five. This means that, again, at the start of the game, you inna innately have the ability to command drones up to 20 kilometers away. So if you don't give a damn about drones and you're just having them as a side for your stabber or your omen or your caracal or whatever, um, then ultimately you'll have a 20 kilometer drone range and you'll be able to launch maximum of two of them. If you train drone all the way up to five, you can now launch up to five drones and the drone command range is 25 kilometers. It's not a huge difference, so it's not really worth doing it if you're not a dedicated drone pilot i mean once you've if you want to fly stabbers or caracals and you've maxed out every other skill in the game you could possibly want this one can be useful because it allows you to use your drones a little bit further but drones on those ship are purely supplemental damage here if you're in a dedicated drone ship that's giving you an additional five kilometer range to your main weapon system which is very powerful once we hit advanced drone, you'll see we get another 5km drone command range, and you can see that I've got both of these trained up to a full 5. That's why when we were looking at the drones earlier, they showed a drone command range of 30km, 20km basic, plus getting an additional 5km for basic drone, and 5km again for advanced drone. You'll also notice that the second part of Advanced Drone gives your drones an additional 100% EHP. That means if your drone had 2000 EHP before, it now has 4000. Very, very useful. Makes your drones nice and tanky. Not, you know, full on tanky, but it means they take a couple of shots before they puff into smoke. Finally then, we have Expert Drone, and as I haven't fully trained this one, I'm going to need to scroll to the bottom of the list here. This gives you, again, another 5 kilometers of drone command range, it gives a 50% increase to drone velocity, and a reduction of their signature radius by 25%. Again, this, the additional 5 kilometers there gives you a basic 35 kilometer drone command range overall, which we can improve further using different ship hulls and or rigs. Then we've got the velocity, which means the drones move faster, they're harder to hit because of that, and they're going to reach their target that little bit quicker. Then we have the signature radius reduction of 25% there, which again makes them harder to hit if your opponent wants to start shooting at drones. Very, very useful in PvP. Now, I'm a little bit annoyed that this skill is right at the bottom of the list here. It should either be at the top um, or somewhere that's a little bit more obvious because it's very easy to miss. And I've had a lot of people in the past tell me I didn't even know that was a thing. So there we are. Now you do. But let's actually have a look at Operation and Upgrade and see what these actually do in regards to your drones. So first of all, Operation. Basic Operation is going to increase your small drone damage by 20% and increase their tracking speed by 10%. This means that obviously your drones are dealing more damage and they can hit their targets better. Always going to be useful. When we go into Advanced Small Drone Operation, the damage is increased again, this time only by 10%, um, plus we get an additional 10% tracking speed again and drone damage amplifier activation time increase. Now we haven't talked about drone damage amplifiers yet and we will cover those later on. Um, they are a weapon upgrade module for drones that basically increases the amount of damage that they do. So having an additional two seconds of that being activated just means that when you activate a DDA, it lasts that little bit longer, you get a bit more damage out of it, which is always nice to have. And the same then for expert small drone operation, we get, I'm gonna have to open the list here again, 
we get an additional 2 seconds of DDA activation time, another 10% small drone damage, and 5% again to small drone tracking speed. It's just extra damage, extra application, and extra weapon upgrade module activation time. Small drone upgrade, on the other hand, what this is doing is again increasing our damage, 15% here, whereas up, uh, Operation 5 was 20%, so it's a slightly smaller increase, but still a very nice increase, 15% um, increased damage an additional 15% accuracy falloff, and 10% optimal range. This means that it's not quite as much damage, but you're getting much better application. You're able to start hitting a target from further away, and if, you, if the target is moving and causing an elliptical orbit, you're able to apply that damage considerably better. It increases the optimal range, which means if your drone is just outside of optimal range, it could now be within it, and thus getting a higher percentage of application. Advanced small drone upgrade then, same kind of thing, additional damage, additional accuracy fall off, additional drone optimal range, then you get that activation time on the DDA. Finally then, uh, expert, again, same kind of thing, additional damage, additional accuracy fall off and range, and additional damage activation time. Now you'll notice that obviously the expert level skills are not as high percentages as the basic skills, like you're seeing there, expert small drone operation is a 10% increase to uh, damage and a 5% increase to tracking speed, whereas operation is a 20% increase to damage and a 10% tracking speed. This means that obviously the small skills are worth more. If you are training up drone skills, make sure you have the skills that are required for your particular hull. Some people I know like to rush straight to small drone operation 4, then go straight to advanced small drone operation 5, um, and skip over the fifth point in small drone operation. I do recommend against that, especially if you're going to be flying a hull that uses the full um, uh, drone operation, for example, the Tristan or the basic Algos. Yes, once if you're moving into a ship that has small, uh, advanced small drone operation, as its named skill, then get that one up first, then come back and get the fifth point of a small drone operation. That said, I tend to try and stagger these. I will take small drone operation up, then I will take small drone upgrade up, then I will take advanced operation up, then advanced upgrade up, and so on and so forth. And if you're worrying um, about like the medium or the large drones, again, it's the same skills, basically additional damage and tracking speed for operation, and upgrade gives you additional damage, accuracy, and fall off, and optimal range. It's the same skills, but just applying to different sizes of drones. So the key point I really want to instill in you there is that the downside of drones is the fact that you do have a third skill to train if you want to be a dedicated drone pilot. It's not just small weapon operation and small weapon upgrade, you also have that drone skill. So please do make sure that you get that leveled up as quickly as possible, at least just to ensure that you can launch as many drones as you want. If you're only flying something that launches three or four drones, then obviously you only need to get to the point where you can launch three or four drones. That fifth point is only important if you want to be able to launch the full uh, complement of five drones or get that additional full five kilometer drone command range rather than just four. But of course, there are other ways to get additional drone command range, additional ways to get damage, etc. And yes, we're talking now about rigs. Drones, of course, are a weapon system, which means the rigs that affect them are combat rigs. And you can open up the combat rig section, tap on drone rigs, and you'll see that there are four different variety of drone rigs. Now, the first is probably the most obvious, the Firepower Augmenter. This just gives an increase to standard damage. It's increasing your drone's firepower by 12.5% at level 1, 15% at level 2, 17.5% at level 3, and of course, at theoretical level 4, it's a 20% in case you hadn't seen the pattern. Essentially, it is a straight-up DPS upgrade. Increased damage dealt by your drones. It's always a nice one to have, and if you want to make your drones deal that little bit more damage, well, it's an obvious choice. We'll come back to it in a brief moment, um, but it is a nice rig to have. The second one, then, on the list here is the drone scope chip. This increases the accuracy falloff adjustment of your individual drones. Again, it means that they can start shooting that little bit earlier, and if they're orbiting slightly further away against like a faster moving target, you're more likely to be in a more favorable part of the accuracy falloff thanks to this chip. That said, I honestly rate this as by far the worst drone chip. I've never seriously fitted one of these to a ship. I've tried it on several different ones, and I've just never found any situation where it is the best rig to use. Literally only useful if you cannot afford anything else, at which point I'd say don't buy it and just use that towards getting something better. 
We then have the Drone Speed Augmenter, and this is rather confusingly worded. It suggests an activation time adjustment here of minus 7.5%, which is exactly what it does. It means your drones shoot faster. Drone Speed Augmenter makes people think that it's about flight velocity of drones, that they reach their target quicker. It's not. It is very much about the uh, actual activation time of your drones, how frequently they are firing your shots. And just on the subject of poor wording, if we go back up to the drone firepower rig, it points here that this ship's modification is designed to increase a ship's sentry drone damage. I 100% guarantee you it applies to all types of drone damage, not just sentry drones. Just a bit of confusingly worded stuff there that I'm hoping one day does get patched out of the English translation. The drone speed augmenter, only 7.5% reduction on level 1, at level 2 it's a 10% reduction, level 3 gives you a 12.5% reduction, and the theoretical level 4 gives you a 15% activation time adjustment. When you are going for maximum DPS on your drones, the best way to do so is with two speed augmenters and one firepower. There is a stacking penalty that you'll see um, on any type of rig, so if you're putting multiple of the same type of rig on, the second one's not as good as the first first one and the third one's not as good as the second one. That means that despite the fact that the drone speed augmenters are better than their equivalent firepower, having more than two means the third one is just going to be pointless, at which point the firepower does pick up and become the better option. Ultimately, if you want fast alpha damage, um, you want to be able to do a good amount of damage in one hit, for example if you're using sentry drones, then 100% at that point the drone firepower can outweigh the speed augmenter. But for most day-to-day -day use, if the highest DPS you can get using rigs is two speed augmenters and one firepower. The fourth and final rig for drones is the Control Range Augmenter, and this does exactly what it says on the tin. It increases your drone command range by 5 kilometers at level 1, 10 kilometers at level 2, 15 kilometers at level 3, and 20 kilometers at the theoretical level 4. Essentially, this is just an excellent way of bumping up the additional range of your drones. For example, if you're in a Dominix that has sentry drones fitted, and you're finding that your drone command range is sitting at around its 80 km standard thanks to the Dominix's bonuses, you've then trained up a couple of additional levels in drone and you've got that to 90 km, but you still would rather get that to like 100, maybe even 110? then you can add a couple of drone control range augmenters to your ship's rig and increase the range at which your drones can operate. And that allows you to sit at relative safety on the other side of the battlefield while your drones do all the hard work for you. Very, very powerful strategy there. You'll see me showcase that in the Rattlesnake video and indeed in the Dominix video. Not useful if you want to go brawling, but if you want to use a sniping drone fit, 100% a very powerful rig option for you. Most weapon systems in Eve Echoes have a dedicated weapon upgrade module. For example, cannons get the gyro stabilizer, lasers get the heatsink, and so on. Drones actually get two. We've talked about one of these a couple of times already. That is the drone damage amplifier. So let's have a look at this one first. Now the drone damage amplifier does exactly what it says on the tin, it amplifies the damage of your drones, like it, it couldn't be much more clear than that. Let's have a look at its stats though. So drone damage amplifier has a very small power grid requirement of only 5 megawatts, useful because it means you can fit this to things like frigates and destroyers as well as the big boys like the battle cruisers and battleships. You've got an activation cost here of 140 gigajoules, which we'll come back to in a moment, and a damage bonus of 5%. Basically, when you fit a drone damage amplifier to your ship, you increase your drone's damage by 5%. If your drones were doing 100 damage per shot, they're now doing 105. As simple as that. They also have a activation time adjustment here of minus 3.25%. So by fitting this to a ship, your drones are going to fire 3.25% faster than they were previously. That's a straight up DPS upgrade. Now the activation cost here of 150 giga 140 gigajoules then means that you can activate the drone damage amplifier for a bigger boost. For the next 20 seconds, the activation time there, the damage boost goes up by a further 6.49% and the activation time adjustment is modified by 400%. So instead of 3.25% negative, you're looking at about 13% negative there. So it's a lot faster firing drones and they're doing significantly more damage for the 20 seconds that that is activated. Once it deactivates, once that 20 second activation time is over, there is a 60 second reactivation delay. 
which then you have to wait through all of that before you can choose to activate it again. You can have multiple of these modules and thus you can sort of synchronize them. You can have one of them activated and as soon as it finishes you activate the next one and so on. Um, ultimately there is a stacking penalty for that. You'll find that it's not quite a full 5% DPS increase, a 5% damage increase for the ones further down the line that you add on, but it is a way for amplifying your damage that little bit further if you just need a little bit of extra kick out of the firepower. It's also worth noting that when we talked about the drone skills earlier on, we had advanced and expert in both operation and upgrade, giving additional seconds to the drone damage amplifier. Now, for both of these, an advanced, small advanced and small expert on operation and upgrade all give an additional two seconds. So if you were sitting at full 555 small drone operation and 555 small drone upgrade, that's going to be an additional additional two seconds, two seconds, two seconds, and two seconds, and a total of eight additional seconds for 28 seconds of activation time, nearly 30 seconds. So if you activate one of these when it goes off, if you activate the second one, the first one should be just coming off cooldown by time the second one finishes. That's a great way of synchronizing. It's also worth noting that these are affected by small, medium, and large skills. So if you trained up small drone skills to fly things like the Tristan, the Worm, the Dragoon, and the Algos, then you decided that you wanted to train medium drone skills because you wanted to fly something like a Myrmidon, a Prophecy, an Arbitrator, or a Vexa, then the medium drone skills increase the activation time of the drone damage amplifier, which... <laughs> does stack. You can get an additional 8 seconds for each level of that, and if you happen to have all small, medium, and large drone skills trained, that's 44 seconds of additional uh, of, of activation time there. 24 seconds additional onto what we already have. That makes for very powerful drone damage amplifiers. And of course they start at Mark 3 and they increase from there. You'll notice that the only increase between a Mark 3 and the top tier version of a drone damage amplifier is ultimately the activation time adjustment and the damage bonus when activated. It's a very minor increase between them, um, so you can go, don't feel too bad for going for a basic DDA if you can't afford one of the bigger ones. It's not all that much of an upgrade from one to the next. The other type is called a drone navigation computer. Now you'll notice that this has a significantly larger power grid requirement than the drone damage amplifier did, 49 megawatts here, compared to the DDA's 5. We then have completely different stats on it as well. It's got a fairly large activation cost, it only activates for 10 seconds, and still has that same reactivation delay of 60 seconds. And what this does is it gives a flight velocity adjustment to your drones. Essentially it means your drones are going to move faster they're going to reach their target quicker, they're going to orbit that little bit faster as well. Now these aren't as nearly as popular as the drone damage amplifier and a lot of people have asked what on earth is the actual purpose of these. Yeah, like cool, it gets to its target a couple of seconds earlier, but it takes up an entire low slot to do that. This I would consider a primarily PvP module because you can use this, to, if someone targets your drones, you can use this to retarget re nice and quickly, get them out of harm's way or just make it so they speed tank that little bit better against your opponent. I'll be honest, I don't tend to fit a drone navigation computer, but that doesn't mean that there's no purpose to them. It just means that I personally don't have the low slots to spend on one of these. But again, I'm a frigate and destroyer pilot, and most of my ships only have three or four low slots, so every single one comes at a premium. If you're running something like a Prophecy or a Dominix that has considerably more low slots, this may get a look in there as a way to help you get your drones to and from where they're needed as quickly as possible. Let's briefly talk about drone management for a moment, and for this I've jumped into my worm, which is the Gurustus Pirates Faction Frigate. Now, first of all, before you undock, you need to make sure that your drones are actually in your ship. Um, it sounds like a, key, like a really obvious point, but it does bear repeating. Now, obviously, you can come to the fitting page here, and you can see that I've got a couple of Mark IX Hornets already equipped into the drone tubes here. But in station, I've got a load of extra Hornets, Warriors, Acolytes, and Hobgoblins, and there's a couple of different ways that of course I can load these in. I can just simply tap on the acolyte and then store it in the drone bay and that's now going to come with the worm when I undock. And if you want to put it into the drone tubes here instead directly, of course you just tap on the hobgoblin or whatever drone you want to do and you put it there and there it is, all popped in. 
But if you've got a whole load of these that you want to move in one go, there is an easier way. You can just go into the item hanger, we can go here to multi-select, grab the hornets and the warriors, go to move two, and if we tap next to where it says worm cargo hold, the same here on the Tristan above, you can tap that little arrow and there is the drone bay. That allows us to just put it straight into the drone bay, and now if I jump back to the fitting menu and open up there, you can see there they are. So now I've got two hobgoblins, two acolytes, two hornets, and two warriors ready to just go out and go hunting with. So let's undock and show drones in space. When you're undocked and in space, your drones will appear down with all of your other modules in the command overview at the bottom right of your screen. You see I've got two hobgoblins here. And if I tap on these one by one, you'll see that when you tap on them, you activate them. You launch them out into space. And if we zoom right out, you should be able to see these are now orbiting me. They're these two little green dots here, and if I actually tap Observe on one of these, you can get a nice little close-up view of what the Hobgoblin actually looks like. And if we tap on it in Reset Camera, it'll take us back to the worm. Now, ultimately, as you look at the module, you'll see it's now pulsing green, and in the top left, it's got a little icon that shows like an orbit. That means we're in passive mode. The drones are orbiting my ship in order to stay close to me. If I were to change course and activate a micro warp drive or something and shoot off into the distance, those drones will follow me. And if you were actually to hit a warp and warp to, a, like, say, a combat encounter, or warp to a gate, or jump through a gate, your drones do automatically dock back to you and pass through. Currently, at time of me making this video, that is not true in Nihilus Dead Space. As you jump through the gates in Nihilus Dead Space, you do need to manually pull the drones back to you. Now, if you look at the module icon in the bottom right of the command overview there, you'll see that there are actually three little lines at the bottom of each drone. These correspond to shield, armor, and hull of your drones. Drones, like any ship, have shields. Beneath those shields, they have armor. Beneath the, the armor, they have the hull, and when the hull is breached, that's when the drone is destroyed. It can be very difficult to see. I know it's not the clearest representation of those bars, um, but it is there as information if you need it. Now, I mentioned early on that one of the big varieties in regards to drones is the fact that you can change them on the fly, even in combat. So let's have a look at how you actually do that. Well, essentially, if you tap on a drone and drag it, you get this little mini menu above it. Now, if we try to just go to change straight off, you'll see that it tells us, nope, sorry, they're in space, we can't do that. So what we have to do is actually return that drone back to the ship. And if we zoom out, you'll see it flies in and disappears. And same here with the return there. Wait for it and it's back into the ship. Now if we drag one of these to change, we can manually sit here and go, right, okay, let's change those to warriors, and then we're going to relaunch them one at a time, and off go the two warriors, now into space, into combat. Now obviously bringing them back one at a time is not a good way to do it, so we can drag and actually hit return all, and you'll see they do both come back, and zoop, there they are in the ship, we can now go back to change, and change them back to hobgoblins, or wasps, or, uh, or vespers, or warriors, or whatever the heck you fancy changing those to, and bring them back out into space. And that's basically it. That's how to use your drones in space, otherwise they work as if they were any other weapon system. Lock onto a target, tap the drone, it shoots off into combat, starts firing instantly, but will only start applying its damage obviously once it's in range. If you're sitting there with drones like this and you're shooting them at something 30 kilometers away, well, if I long press on the drone, which can always be tricky to do. A long press on the drone, you can see here that with the skills I have, the Hobgoblin here has an optimal range of 2.58 kilometers and an accuracy falloff of 2.64. That means at 10 kilometers, they're not really doing anything at all, but they've got a drone command range of 35 kilometers. That means that if I'm sitting there at 35 kilometers away from something and I launch the drones, they're going to start shooting immediately as they target. So you'll see a lot of zero damage, zero damage, zero damage. Then suddenly once they're in range, the damage will kick off from from there. But there we have it, that is pretty much everything that you need to know regarding drones in EVE Echoes, how to use them, how to fit them, um, how they all work, what the different types of drones all are, what kind of ships you might be interested in, etc and so on. If you are interested in learning more about these individual drone ships, do check out the rest of this channel. I have got videos and fitting guides on various different Algos and Drone uh, Dragoon ships there for destroyers. The Tristan is one of my favourite ships. We've looked at the Worm several times. I've covered various different destroyers, um, battle cruisers, cruisers, and uh, all kinds of drone ships 
um, of various different sizes. So do check out if there's a particular ship you want to know about and um, see if it's on the channel already. If not, put a request in in the comment section down below. I'm always looking for more uh, ideas and information um, for what kind of videos you guys would like to see. So if you've got any ideas, please do let me know. Otherwise, I really hope this does help. I hope that's given you an idea of how drones all work. Come join the Catskull Discord if you've got any like uh, big searing questions. We've got a friendly bunch of folk there who are more than happy to help out with any questions you may have regarding Eve Echoes. Thanks for watching this one right the way to the end, folks. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.